What do you add, ladies and gentlemen? Light goes here, and today I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks for No Man's Sky. It's going to be more of a beginner's tips and tricks guide today. Um, if you've been playing the game for a while, you're probably going to know a lot of these tips and tricks, but that being said, let's get right into the video. Now, when you start off in No Man's Sky, best thing for you to do is just go through the tutorial you don't really need to be concerned about everything the game's tutorial at this point is actually really good and it guides you through the beginning of the game very well there are a couple things that I uh, that I want to talk about though and one of those is as you're mining different elements in the game you're you'll notice that a bar on the top right hand corner will fill up and eventually it'll get rid and if you leave it and keep mining it will actually overheat and your multi-tool will stop working and then you'll have to wait for a little cooldown whereas if you let go of the trigger like as soon as it gets to that point where it's overheating it'll actually within probably not even a second it'll reset and then you can continue mining uh, the melee speed boost as you can see here on screen right now if you do a melee attack just before you do your your jetpack you will actually blast yourself forward so you gotta time it correctly but yeah just hit uh, hit the melee uh, strike and then your jetpack right away and you should do a nice boost forward the game puts you in third person by default I really like to be in first person so just teach you guys how to do this if you'd rather be in first person you just gotta press down on the d-pad and go over to the settings the little settings icon and go in there and you'll see a little picture of your character and then you can click on that and that'll actually put you into first person mode now once you get off the planet the first planet that you're on Basically, I just recommend that you continue on with the quest. Just follow the quest line, and you'll be completely fine. The game is, pr like I said before, as far as the tutorial goes and as far as the quests go, it actually teaches you a lot in the game, and it's very important that you stick to the quest because it actually unlocks a lot of things. It'll give you a lot of blueprints, and it'll te it'll actually teach you a lot just from doing the quest. Most creatures in the game are harmless. Almost every creature that you're going to come across, I would say at least 90% of the creatures, probably more than 90% of the creatures, will not try to attack you. They're not going to be harmful to you at all. But there is the odd creature that will attack you. And if you see one of those, you can run away from them if you want. Uh, but if you're in an area and you're trying to mine or you're trying to build something and one of those guys are co is coming after you, they actually do quite a bit of damage to your character. So you're best off just taking them out. Now as far as the building goes, as you can see with my little place that I have here, I'm up on a cliff, I just mostly look for a place that I think looks really cool and I'll just build my first little base there um, and then later on in the game I'll start working on a more advanced uh, building, more advanced base. It's going to be a little ways into the game before you unlock all the different building pieces in order to build like a really cool really big base so at the beginning of the game don't really worry too much about your base just build a small functional place in a place that you like just build in a place that you think is cool and uh, make sure that you have enough room around to uh, to expand if that's where you're going to keep your base for an extended period of time now let's talk about uploading your discoveries it is very important for you to upload your discoveries. You can just go into the menu and over to discoveries and you want to upload everything. You can actually rename things as well, which is pretty cool. Like you can rename one of your favorite planets to really whatever you want. Or say if there's a specific element on that planet and you want to remember, if it's an ice planet and it has uh, the ice crystals on it, which is good for making glass you can rename it icy or something like that just so you'll remember but um, also uploading your discoveries is very important because it gives you nanites which you're going to need once you get to the space station and you're trying to unlock blueprints and whatnot mm -hmm. alright let's talk about space stations space station is a very good spot for you to get new ships all you need to do to get a new ship is go up to it talk to the person that's in the ship you just click make an offer on ship and in here you just click on negotiate price and then you can compare your current ship to the ship you're thinking about buying and see the differences between the two 
main thing that you want to be looking for is the slots that are on the ship that you're thinking about buying. You want to have enough slots that you can actually carry the things that you want to carry. One other thing that you should keep in mind is the class of the ships. There are multiple classes to each type of ship. There is C class, B class, A class, and S class. And then there are also special types of ships as well, but you don't have to worry about that right now. But the best class that you can get is S type class, and then A, B, C from there. As you can see, this one is a B, which is an upgrade from the ship that I currently have. It gives you a few different bonuses, shield and damage. Now this will t depend on the type of ship as well. There are three different types of ships. There are fighters, and there are explorers, and then there are hauler type ships. The fighters are better for fighting. They have better damage and decent shields. The haulers are better for bringing cargo around and they usually have better shields and then the explorers have better hyperdrives and they're better for going from galaxy to galaxy and exploring the universe so those are some of the more important things that you need to know about ships but yeah space stations are a very good place to get ships especially early on in the game at this point in the game on the right side of the space station you're really only going to need to be concerned with the galactic trade terminal right here for buying and selling items later on you're going to be able to get quests from that guy there one other key feature on this side of the space station is the teleporter later on when you're going from system to system the teleporter is going to be very important now on the left side of the space station you've got some very cool things that I want to talk about starting off you have the multi-tool vendor right here and you want to come to this guy every single time you go to a new space station because you want to check out the multi-tool that he has and see if it's better than the one you're currently using. Also this is where your nanites are going to come in handy. Each of the vendors that I'm going to show you now are going to sell you blueprints and also upgrade modules for your ship, for your vehicles once you get them unlocked for your multi-tool and for your suit and they all cost nanite clusters this guy here is your ship vendor so same as the multi-tool guy you can get blueprints and you can get upgrade modules there from that guy this guy is for your vehicles once you finally unlock the vehicles and then this guy is for your suit now also one very important thing here every single station that you go to you want to make sure that you come here especially early on in the game because you can unlock extra slots for your suit you can unlock general slots you can unlock the cargo slots the cargo slots are really cool because they're they actually have double the capacity of the general slots and then you have the technology slots now there's just one other thing that i want to talk about in this guide and that is the appearance modifier terminal as you can see here you have a whole bunch of different options for modifying the appearance of your character it's very cool modify the race you can modify pretty much every aspect of your suit of your character that you can think about alright everyone Hope you got some useful information out of this video. I will be doing a lot more No Man's Sky guides in the future. I actually have a money making guide in the works so keep an eye out for that. If you did get some useful information out of this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Later.